John Westhaver, welcome to the Dog On It show. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Got some uh, sick uh, little kids, but uh, with some colds. But uh, other than that, I'm doing. I'm doing good. A little bit of lack of sleep, but I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, how is the weather in Vancouver? Victoria. Victoria. Uh, okay. Victoria. The weather here in Victoria is it's raining today, but uh, we're above zero. We've been above zero pretty much all all year so far. Uh, what's What's uh, nice about Victoria is we don't get a lot of snow. <laughs> well, I was going to yeah. say and, and say nice, but also on the downside, you don't get snow. <laughs> you You move from New Brunswick, correct? Yes. So yeah. you're used to snow. Oh yeah, love the snow, love the snow. Um, what's it's funny as 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 a burn survivor, as somebody that, as you can see, my hands are are been damaged by the fire. So when your skin is damaged from the, from fur, burns or complications like this here, you don't have great blood supply. So um, being in a place where it doesn't get really cold, it's nice because you can work with the hands outside. Uh, my hands don't get dry as much as I used to, uh, but I miss the, the outdoor activities in the snow, like snowmobiling and sledding and skating and all that fun stuff. Well, John, I can tell you, I don't miss anything about winter. I wish I could <laughs> miss all of winter, but God bless you if you love winter. The, how? Yeah. Let's get... John, I know you are a safety advocate, and that's why I've asked you onto the show. But this all started in what, 1994? Yeah, so um, 94, I was involved in a car crash. April 29th, 1994, I was involved in a fatal car crash. Um, me and uh, three of my friends, uh, three, uh, two, of, two of my friends were high school seniors, the grade 12, with me as well, and a friend had graduated. We were out on a Friday night uh, drinking. Our driver was sober and ended up losing control of the car because of speeding. And because of the crash, uh, I sustained burns to 75% of my body. And uh, three of my friends died. And that crash um, not only impacted me, but it impacted the community. And so being a teenager... Um, was was tough enough. Being a burn survivor, <clears throat> on top of that, was it was challenging. So overcoming, you know, the challenges that are that come along with being a burn survivor, but also on top of that, you know, the challenges of dealing with the loss of three friends. It was uh, something I I would say is a, a, something of a nightmare per se, nightmare real, you know, in reality sort of thing, and um. I, I was living my life, getting back into kind of life mode, I guess. I never, ever thought I would actually get into speaking. And it wasn't until I moved to Victoria in 2000 that I, that I started thinking about uh, speaking. I got involved with the uh, Firefighter Burn Fund of Victoria here in uh, Victoria, B.C. Uh, worked with the peer support group for burn survivors. And... Uh, started thinking about getting into safety and, and talking about speaking and, you know, reaching out. I had some people around me saying, you know, you should share your story more. And I ended up getting involved with uh, the Insurance Corporation of British Columbia and approached them in 2001 and had a few meetings with them. And we kind of created a partnership in the beginning, worked with them a little bit in the beginning and kind of went off on my own for a while. And then in 2008, I uh, became a full-time uh, partner with them in the uh, road safety uh, program that we offer in high schools. So I talk to high school students about road safety and what it's like to overcome a fatal car crash in hopes of having youth think about their choices not not only when they're in the moment of the choice, but beforehand, so that they can they can start preparing for those choices. And I've been doing that for, I've been speaking now for 19 years. Uh, love doing what I do. Love making a difference with youth. It's, it's nice. It's what's powerful is 
you know, when I get a message from a parent saying like, like my child just came home and they never talk about their day at school and they just spent 30 minutes talking about you and the impact that you've not only made on them, but their friends. When you get parents that reach out to you and share that, you know, you're making a huge difference in the world. Well, and no. so go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say you're making a huge difference with teens, yeah. but today you're speaking to truck drivers and I don't honestly, I, and I'm not trying to make slight of truck drivers here, but we're, you're really talking about a decision-making process and yeah. about the way to make correct decisions. And truck drivers, unfortunately, on a regular basis, sometimes they make poor choices. Um, you know, so how do you make or how do you talk to people about making good decisions? That's a great question. I actually just uh, did a talk in November. So I'm I'm not only a high school speaker. I don't just talk to high school students. I'm actually um, upping my game or altering my game a bit. I'm actually doing corporate uh, talks as well. So I'm talking to organizations and companies about road safety, but also, you know, truck drivers as well, because it's not just teens. It's, it's everybody. I'm a 45 year old adult. I drive just like everybody else. I'm like a truck driver. You know, I don't drive a truck, but you know, I'm, I'm the age. So I know what people are dealing with. You know, I'm, I'm in the same space. I did a talk in, uh, in November to a road safety coalition out of Texas. And it was, it was uh, an opportunity for me to really work with this industry. And, uh, one of the things they shared was like, it was good to have a story behind the safety message because often, you know, safety advocates, they talk about safety from the, the procedure po standpoint and what are the protocols and safety and what are the gears you want to wear, you know, to keep safe, but they don't often hear from somebody who's been through something, you know? And so that's where I can win a play. I can talk about road safety from the standpoint of this is how it's going to change your life. This is what you're going to have to deal with when you are involved in a fatal crash or when you're involved in an incident. And so when it comes to truck drivers, you know, you guys are the, you know, maybe overused, but it's the backbone of society today and getting goods from here to there sort of thing and getting things delivered. One of the things that we don't realize, though, is there's more stress on you now. There's more pressure on you to get your 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 goods or service your, your your product delivered on time, and people are relying on that. And when you're not in uh, a place you're supposed to be, you know you've got the dispatcher calling you. Hey, why are you why aren't you here? And you're ready back. Hey, look, I'm in the queue. I'm sitting a mile down the road at a truck stop because I haven't got the go ahead to get my truck unloaded. Or you go to and you're in the dock and you're you got your truck backed up, but so and so doesn't have the paperwork to unlock your truck, so you can't even get it unloaded because a forklift operator is on his lunch break, and nobody's communicating. Are you and sure? And then you... adds to the stress of of getting getting your deliver your your goods delivered on time. So you know that stress adds to adds to your driving behavior. So it changes how you drive. So now you you've been backed up and you know it's it's Thursday afternoon and you just want to get home for the weekend. And so you might little you might push it just a little bit more than you normally would or you know you know digital logbooks are are different nowadays than the old logbooks where you'd stop and like oh man I got how's my math today am I going to be able to do my <laughs> my logbook <laughs> properly? You know so it's like there's all kinds of different things that you guys go through that we're not even privy to. Plus you're on a highway with a huge trailer behind you and you got to be safe. You, you know, it's, it's your responsibility, you know, to be safe out there. And you could have other drivers that are, excuse my French jackasses, you know, on the road, but no matter how they are, your primary thing is safety, you know, and like you guys are dealing with so much stuff and, you know, and 
you know, I think the biggest thing in, in safety is having your managers on board with safety. Like, like what are the stuff that you guys are going to be, you're going to be challenged with, you know, uh, in the run of the day, like how, like, what are the, the, I, I say breakdowns, what are the breakdowns in your, in your workflow that's going to cause you to overlook safety? You know, when it comes to 4.30 on a Friday, you know, when you're in your, you're two hours out from home, do you push it, you know, to, to get home? Or do you, do you take that regulated break that you're supposed to take so that you get the rest? Are you sure you've never been a truck driver? Because you seem to understand a lot of the stresses and the breakdowns uh, in the workflow that uh, are pretty typical. Well, I've worked in industries that have truck drivers. So, you know, I used to work for an organization uh, that delivered fuel, so a fuel company. And so it's, you know, I know the dispatch side of things a bit. Uh, but I know, you know, it's all it's all human it's the human condition, like what we're all dealing with in, in this. And it's like, like it, it just, you know, to speak to safety, you have to put yourself over in the other person's world. Like, re and really get like, what is it like for so-and-so? Cause you can't just say, these are your, these are your protocols. This is, this is your list of safety things, you know, do this, 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 and you'll be safe. Well, not everything's on there. <laughs> not everything's on there. There's things that you're going to have a breakdown and you're going to get frustrated on the road because you can't reach your dispatcher and they can't make the decision for you. And then you're going to be like, you know, or let's say you're between two major cities in the back roads of no, who knows where, and you run a flat, you know? And so it's going to take forever for the service guide to get to you to even change your tire. If they're able to on the side of the road. Yeah, no, there's, there's all kinds of stress as a driver and I, you've got a really good concept of it. And then today we can just add on one more thing, I think, and that's COVID, which is for all of yeah. us, but COVID, I know I find myself the first several months We're uh, for the audience. When you're uh, watch this, we're recording in February, but it's been almost a year now of COVID stress and yeah. it's finally getting to me. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I think it's yeah. getting to all of us. I can't yeah. imagine being a truck driver right now, having to all of the stresses that are normally associated and then add COVID on there as well. If you could give a driver a tip, just one tip for handling stress so that they make the right choice when it comes to safety. Yeah. Can you say something about how to make the right choice? Well, it comes down to, you know, what are the impacts of your choices? And when you look at who's impacted when you make a poor choice, you know, around road safety or, or anything, you look at who's impacted and that helps you make better choices. So say, for example, you know, you're, you're, the, you're the father or the mother and you're the breadwinner and you're a truck driver and your family's relying on you to to bring home the bacon per se and some and you make some poor choices and it costs you your your driving license or your your ability to drive you now have lost that ability to provide for your family or say for example you've got small children and your poor driving habits cause you to be in a collision or an incident a crash that a child is killed you know that impacts you that impacts the rest of your life you know and if you think about how your choices that you make every single day how they impact other people it helps shape how you make choices in the space of covid we you know dealing with everything on top of this like like number one like look after your mental health like what are you doing you know for yourself are you getting enough rest are you getting enough exercise are you are, are you fueling your body with food or, you know uh, enough and if you're having a bad day you know are you talking to people you know you're talking to the right people um that can support you in this because the biggest thing is you're not alone there are people out there to support you and it, when it comes to mental health and and, and trucking like 
a lot of times we we have this notion that we are tough, we're bulletproof, we're strong, we're men. And there's some women out there that are drivers, but you know, we're the we're the tough industry. You know, people look up to us. And we don't we don't show fear, we don't show weakness. Well, that's a that's a barbaric thought, you know, and it's a self-serving thought. And in today's age, day and age, like, you know, we're all this together. You don't have to prove your your strength by, you know, being able to do things all by yourself. If you are struggling, you know, reach out. You know, when you are stressed out and you're trying to deal with things by yourself and and you're not managing it well, the people that are closest to you are impacted. Your kids your wife, your husband, your 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 partner, your your family, your parents, your everybody in your in your, in your space, they're impacted because they see you. It was funny because I did some work on myself a few years ago, some personal growth work, and I come to this realization, hey, I'm a real asshole sometimes. I'm an arrogant asshole sometimes. Sorry, I I, I apologize for the, the swearing, but it was like I didn't really get that. And it was like, and I said, you know. To, to some people in my life, like my family and friends, like, you know, sometimes I can be a real asshole at times. And they're like, John, really? <laughs> You're just getting this now? We just just let you go off on your thing, you know? It's just, you know, why, why even bother sometimes? Like, it's hard to communicate with you sometimes because you go on your soapbox or you go and, you know, you're, you're, you're in this mode. And it's like, your kids, especially, your partners, they know when you're dealing with something. You may think you're hiding it, but you're not. They know you. John, I just read a very unfortunate story. In the, I, I get most of my news on the CBC, the digital thing. And <laughs> there is a huge influx of babies coming into the ER in Canada now that have injuries that that baby could not have caused. And they're putting it down to the stresses of COVID and, and the parents and everything else. Yeah, um, yeah it's just, I hear you. And, uh, you know, I think I, I can speak to that. I can speak to that because I've got twins that are 22 months old. And, and um, when your child, not only one, but two, when your children are crying, and they're frustrated, and you're at your wits end, you're tired, you're exhausted, your partner's tired and exhausted, there's all these stresses, you're not getting what you need normally, and your kid's crying, you can't figure it out in the moment, you know, it takes a big person to pause all that noise in your head and, and stop it, and stop listening to all the noise in your head, all the thoughts about, you know, you're making up about what's going on, and how inadequate you are as a parent, how you can't do this, and all this. It takes a big person to stop all that noise in your head, and just be with that crying baby. Sometimes they just need to cry. Sometimes they need to get it out of their system. How many times have you gotten pissed off at somebody and you're just frustrated and pissed off at the world and they just shut you down and they walk away and you're still left pissed off? <laughs> and you're like, no, 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 get back here. I want to like finish this. Uh, Your child sometimes has, has energy in her system that she just needs to get rid of and she doesn't know how to communicate that. And sometimes they just need to cry. Yeah, no, it's... And you just got to be with them. You just got to hold them and give them that space. The stresses of the world today, and specifically for truck drivers, but for all of us, um, because of COVID are unique, and I'm sure as hell looking forward to an end of this. Now, I, I got a question for you. Uh, you know, unfortunately, sure. I, I wish we we had met. I mean, we met through the internet, which is fantastic, uh, yeah. but you're a hell of a guy. Uh, on your <laughs> website, Thank you. you... Um, the, the question I guess that I get from your website is the day of the crash, you wish you had spoken up, I think uh, something along that, that line. And yet you, your driver of that crash was sober. What do you mean? Yep. So 
I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever experienced a, a fatal car crash or not, or anybody that's out there that has. When you when you survive a fatal car crash, that impacts you not only physically but emotionally, mentally. There's survivor guilt and grief and blame, you know, that you were left behind, that you or that I was left behind, and I had all these thoughts and you know, why am I left behind? What did I do? This is you know, being a burn survivor. That's the punishment for not speaking up because as a regular teenage guy, I knew to speak up. I knew not to get in a car when someone was drinking. I knew to tell our driver to slow down if they're being a, a jackass per se. But it, like I. I knew all these things, but that night, because I was drinking with my friends, we had a sober driver. I didn't tell our driver to slow down. Or if we did, it was like, you know, uh, you know, you should slow down. Like there wasn't real, a real urgency to it. And we were just being teenage guys. So there, there, there's always that. I wish I, I would have spoken up. I wish I would have made different choices that night, but wishing now after the fact doesn't change what happened. But what it does, though, is it allows me to speak to youth and people today and truck drivers today to say, hey, this is how it impacts you. This is how the real human impact or this is the real human impact uh, when a crash happens. This is how it, it changes your life. You know, so when you find yourself in these situations, these are the choices you're going to be faced with. So why why try to deal with it in the moment? Why not try to deal with it before you get into the moment? Why not like work on like what are some of the choices you're going to be making, you know, and, and be proactive about it. I'm working with um, four other speak or three other speakers on a pro a new this new program we're doing and this our program partnership whatever you want to call it. And we're four speakers. We have over seventy years or almost seventy years of speaking experience, um, and we all come from different areas of safety and we all speak on different things. And it just, we're all kind of talking about, you know, safety, but it's really to, you know, we've been there. We wear the scars. We, we've lived the, the challenges and obstacles that you're faced with after these incidences, you know, so we get to speak from it, you know, and be proactive about safety. You know, it's easy to, or sorry, it's easy. It's it's hard to try to collect the pieces and pick up the pieces and figure out things after the fact. It's easier to take a moment before something happens and talk about it. So we're on the side of proactive safety. Like, what do we need to do today so that you get to go home to your kids tonight? So that you're, it's not just you being safe at work, but it's your whole work team. It's your whole company that's safe. And then when your company is not safe, who does that impact? Hey, it impacts the family. It impacts the spouse and the children and the grandparents of that yeah. individual driver. And then, of course, it it impacts everybody. Like um, yeah. I often think about Humboldt. Uh, the crash for the the hockey team, yep. and yep. you know, you look at what that impacted, uh, the bad choices yep. that were made there. And I mean, yep. I I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but if I remember, it was thirteen um, who passed away, and then the rest of the team was injured. But I'm also thinking about all the first responders who showed up, uh, yep. what they must be dealing with, um, you know, and then the the communities as a whole that Humboldt community, all the churches. And I mean, there was volunteers. Uh, so I, I just can't imagine the impact of that bad decision. I don't know if you read some of the stuff, but that driver, had he been pulled over and inspected prior to the crash would have been put out of service because he yeah. had some major uh, logbook violations. In other words, he'd been working too much. Um, yeah. And he was distracted at the time of the crash and totally blew the stop sign. Uh, yep. You know, I just, I don't want other drivers to go through the same thing. Um, yeah. So, you know, I appreciate what you're saying about, you know, think about your choices is what I come, what it comes down to, I think. Yeah. And also like, if you look at that, that incident, that was a big, 
uh, a big crash and it currently it shone a light on a uh, on an area of the trucking industry and safety industry that I think needs to be talked about more and I think you know your safety managers and, and and your company owners are listening to this you know it really becomes a part of it's all of our responsibility to be safe out there and as a as a company owner or a manager uh, of drivers it's your responsibility to make sure that your drivers are equipped and that they have what they need to be safe on the road, but also that you get, like, you understand that that your added stress, um, and in trying to make up time per se or, or or do the impossible, you know, are you thinking more about the profit sharing of the business and, and delivering a, a product on time, or are you thinking about the safety? And then when you think about the safety, it's like how do we be? How do we create safety? Um, in, in in the real world, that that's that's practical. You know, we want to we want to make sure we we're delivering on goods and, and getting things done in a safe manner. But it's got to there's going to be a practicability uh, practicability uh, part of it as well. Like there's got to be it's got to be workable. You know, and if it's not workable, you know that safety practice kind of goes up you know by, by the wayside. And as a manager, you got to look like like how how were we operating that that we're pushing our drivers to limit. And then if you look at the consumer side, because the cons- I think it's the it's also on the consumer side as well that we look at things as well, because we live in a day and age, and this is just my, my belief, um, that we live in a day and age where we want more for less. Yeah. We want to pay the cheapest possible price, but get the most powerful, you know, best product out there, or service out there, but we don't want to spend money for it, and that's just the society that we live in. We 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 it's kind of we know the marketing game. We we pay less, we get more. And when you when you live in that that world and that mindset, you know, for a company to be profitable, they've got to offer more for less. So where are they going to cut the corners? They're going to cut the corners in the production and the delivery. And so if we look at, you know, as a consumer, like it's, it's our responsibility to start paying more for things. Like I like to be, you know, I like to be a thrifty sometimes too and get things for a cheap price. But all, on the same side, I get what I pay for. If I'm not willing to spend the proper money on something, I don't, I shouldn't deserve to get the, 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 full, the full value out of an equivalent product of a higher paying price per se. So if as a consumer standpoint, we need to look at like, when are we going to start paying more for things so that we can actually make sure that the production and delivery side of things that, you know, they're, they're equal and that these people are making a living wage and they're safe. Yeah. John, well said. And thank you because you're right. It, we, and I'm guilty of it. I want everything for as cheap as I can possibly get it. <laughs> Um, and I understand yeah. trucking and the impacts of it all. So as we wrap up, John, last word, do you have any last tips or suggestions for truck drivers? Go home and kiss your kids and tell them you love them and promise them you're going to be safe. Well said. And John, let me just say this. It, it's been an absolute pleasure your contact info is in the show notes below, and I would encourage any trucking company to reach out to John. You are a professional speaker, as demonstrated here, but you are a true professional, and I thank you so much. Thank you for being allowing me to be on your podcast and to and to share my my message and story with the, the your community. You know, it's it's an honor to be here today. And you know, if you've if you've gotten something from today, you know, reach out. You know, it doesn't take much time to reach out. Even send me a, a message like, you know, whatever. Say thank you because all that makes a difference, and we want to make a the biggest possible difference. Uh, but just when you're out there, be safe. Thanks, John. I hope you loved the show as much as I did. Please leave us a like, a thumbs up, a review, a comment, a rating if it is in your heart. Thank you so much. And I do really appreciate your time. And join us again next week for another exciting interview.